In this video, I want to show you my multi-million dollar Q4 Google Ads strategy, which of course has been constantly updated and changed and refined over the past years. I mean, Google Ads never stands still. And especially over the past 12 months, we had PMAX and a bunch of other changes. Smart shopping uh, went away, many other things. So of course, it's a constant process. But in this video, I want to show you what I do this Q4. I mean, we are already almost past October. And without any further ado, let's jump straight in. I hope that you will be able to copy many of the things that I talk about in this video for your own business to maximize your Q4 sales. Very quickly, I wanna tell you what we cover here today. First of all, my results from 2021, very briefly so that you get an idea. Then the common mistakes when running Q4 ads. The core of this video will be the five layers of my Q4 strategy, again, constantly changing and evolving, and some quick tips that you may want to follow if you have the capacity, the budget, etc. So let's talk about my 2021 results. What you see here is my Google Ads Manager dashboard, and you see 2.2 million euros in ad spend last Q4, which translates roughly to like $2.4 million, give or take, right? roughly 5 million clicks and now that's very important around eight to nine million dollars in revenue what you see here those like 35 million they are not accurate because of like currency exchange rates right so the thing is google ads on this top dashboard it shows the cost in actual in in my case euro amounts because it actually exchanges um, all those currencies but it doesn't do the same thing on the purchases scale as uh, purchases sales um, metric. So there we have a bunch of currencies mixed in, whereas the cost is accurate. So in reality, it's roughly eight to nine million, meaning give or take round about a three and a half to four X ROAS across the board. I have some clients where we have like a 2.5 and they're fine. I have others where we are like 14 X ROAS. Um, and the total mix I would say is in the four and a half, uh, three and a half to four range, give or take, right? So that's the results from last Q4 specifically. Of course, there are always some changes. Uh, there are some accounts that are being taken in-house, etc., etc. But the the ones that are connected to me right now that I'm working with right now, that's what we what we have there. So then let's talk about some common mistakes when running Q4 ads. Well. First of all, scaling volume and ad spend with very little profit. I see that over and over again, people trying to maximize their revenue in Q4, but their profits don't, you know, they or well, they are highly suffering from that, right? And if you have long-term customers, if, if they, if you have repeat sales, that may be a good strategy to acquire many customers, but I know many e-commerce brands who just sell like once, right? Who just have a single sale per customer. And in that case, you really need to pay attention to your profits and don't just scale your, C uh, your campaigns with massively high CPCs, etc. Thinking that you need to boost revenue right now. Keep an eye on your profits. If you have a long-term brand, if you have high customer lifetime value, of course, by all means, uh, maybe it makes a lot of sense to, to sacrifice on CPA, but normally pay attention to your profit margin as well. Should be an absolute uh, straightforward thing, right? Then not calculating for returns. Many businesses don't think of returns, especially in Q4, people find better deals, etc. So pay some attention to, uh, to that as well. Running dedicated Q4 campaigns with Google Ads that take away traffic from existing campaigns. Um, there are some exceptions to that. We talk about that in a second. But many people on Q4, they suddenly launch like four, five, six new campaigns trying to like somehow force Google to spend money on these specifically. When in reality, you should rather try to scale your existing campaigns, right? Where all the conversions are, where you have a lot of optimization already. Of course, there are exceptions, as I just said. If you have some unique bundles and everything, maybe it does actually make sense to try something new. But in general, you should rather change your keywords, add new ad copy, you know, um, maybe some new ad groups and everything as well, but not just hammer out campaigns that are very short lived and will be gone in three or two months already. Then not boosting bestsellers or massively discounted items, just going with all your normal products, right? And, and just treating them all the same. When in reality, you might wanna specifically go with a product that might do very well. Normally when I look across the board with many of the brands I work with, we have some bestsellers that are doing crazily well in Q4. Sales are lifted in general, but there are usually in, in most, with most brands, there are some products that are doing exceptionally well that we're really boosting in Q4. 
Then not creating an irresistible offer. That's very important, especially in Q4, you know, especially when you do direct to consumer sales, uh, cosmetics, fashion, accessories, jewelry, gadgets, you name it. It makes a lot of sense to bundle something unique, maybe like a, ex like a free extra product uh, or like an, a nice uh, extra sort of uh, component or just a really huge discount or something like that. This is very important for Q4 um, because people are really in that, you know, buying mode and they want to see if they can get a bargain, if they can get something special. Of course, not everyone is able to do that, but if you can really consider doing that in your business as well. And not doing aggressive retargeting for seven to 14 days. Retargeting is super critical in Q4 sales because people, they check your offer, then they continue shopping and you should do it for like seven to 14 days. Don't make the window too wide and too long because of course people may buy their gifts and whatever. Um, and it doesn't make sense to have a 90 day window really, but that's really something you need to, to consider. Do retargeting on like Facebook, on Google, but make sure that you are following people around. All right, with that being said, let's look at the five layers of my Q4 strategy. And when we talk about my Q4 strategy, and now I have to make myself a little bit smaller for a second. So at the very base, uh, we need to talk about your store, right? You should add some prominent discounts, use bundle deals, as I said, create an irresistible offers wherever you can and let people know about discounts and promotions. Now, this first step is super straightforward, should be very obvious, right? But your store needs to scream, hey, we have sales going on, we have bundles, we have some interesting things that you might want to buy and not just like somewhere, hey, we have 20% off, right? It needs to show people, hey, we have something for you when it comes to like Q4, Black Friday, Christmas, etc. All right, so let's move on with the next step. We talk about shopping here, right? And with shopping ads, you want to continue to passively sell all your products. But for example, via custom labels, you want to adjust for like best sellers, for seasonality. You want to, for example, add different product groups for your absolute best sellers, for some new bundles or things like that. So you want to keep your normal shopping activities because it's the most important campaign type with, with e-commerce. But you want to make sure that you have some adjustments as I said, if you use manual CPC, then you should boost the CPC for some of your key products. Um, it's also, if you build some new bundles, if you create some new like Q4 bundle uh, products, that's one of the exceptions to like create new specific Q4 campaigns as well, right? Because now you have, you technically have like a new product. Also be less restrictive with your TROS bidding if possible. So if you run on 400% and now you want to scale, but you're still very profitable with like 300, 350, consider doing that in favor of volume, right? Make sure you have enough budget um, to not miss out on many of the sales as long as profitability is still there, as I just said. So you might want to make sure that uh, your daily budget is always spend and or, or you know that, that you have a high budget so that you're not like running out of it midway through the day. Um, that's pretty important if you want to maximize your returns and your volume on or in Q4. So for shopping, you want to continue running your ads, you want to do adjustments, you want to treat some products differently, use custom labels, for example. Um, the great thing about shopping is, of course, that your inventory is synced. So if you get some issues with like, you know, stock in Q4, that's not a big deal with shopping. And that's why you should simply continue to run shopping ads with some modifications for certain products. Then search ads. Your search ads, you can have some focused ad campaigns for your best selling products or categories, right? Use the promotion extension. This one will be your best friend um, when it comes to search extensions in Q4, Christmas, Black Friday, you name it, right? Cyber Monday, Th those will typically have a very good click through rate. They will really make people interested in what you sell. Also pre-qualify people with like prices and discounts in your search ads. So tell people now up to 50% off, grab our Black Friday deal, you know, check our Christmas offers. Now, now starting from 99, 9, uh, 39, 99, 99, 99, whatever it is. So be very sort of sales focused in your ads, in your search ads, use pre-qualification text, use discount uh, words, etc. So with search ads, you can be very, very specific and tailor everything to this, um, to these events, basically. By the way, with shopping, it's the same thing. I didn't mention it here, but you can use discounts and promotions on merchant centers so that they appear in your shopping listings too. 
very good idea to do so for Q4 because of course people want to see those discounts um, and they're actively searching for them. So that's something that you should really do. Also, broad match might be a very good idea, especially in Q4 because so many people use exact match and or at least phrase match in Q4 and uh, uh, sorry, so many um, businesses bid very high in Q4, right? And many of them go for the high value keywords in exact and phrase match. So if you use broad instead, you may get away with some cheaper clicks and you don't see this massive rise in CPC, at least to the same extent. Uh, whereas if you just go with like buy jewelry online exact match, those will typically see the highest increase in CPC in Q4. So use broad so that you're a, a bit more uh, widespread. And this typically gives you cheaper CPCs without necessarily sacrificing too much relevance and buying intent, okay? Then we have Pmax. And of course, I have no Q4 data in that sense, the way I have in like search shopping and everything when it comes to Q4. Pmax is an ideal full funnel campaign where you can have like, for example, set aside a budget for Q4 and say I spend 300 bucks a day now or 100 or 500, whatever you might be able to spend or more. Um, the good thing about Pmax is here you can actually put together like a, well, like a Q4 campaign, right? That's what I just mentioned. You can have some assets where you actually sort of talk about your discounts, talk about your promotions, ha have some overlays even on some of the image assets that you use. That's actually allowed with with um, performance max assets right so you can do that um, you can technically have an asset group for this but maybe even want to consider like a full campaign depending on your budget and spend so if you just spend 50 bucks in your pmax it makes more sense to do it in the existing one but if you have a huge budget and you can just create another one put 200 400 600 bucks a day in optimize all these assets for like black friday christmas q4 in general um, then that's something that you may want to try out and have like this sort of fully targeted um, campaign. If you want, you could even consider putting together some like custom segments or audiences that uh, talk about like promotion, discounts and all these like Q4 specific keywords if you want to. But certainly think about having like a full funnel strategy, which essentially a single PMAX campaign can do for you, right? Because you have retargeting, you have all these things in this sort of big Q4 campaign, if you like. And then optional, uh, you can fuel like your top of funnel growth with discovery or display using some custom segments and like some in-market audiences for your products. Just highlight discount and promotions, advertise your bundles and irresistible offers. Here, the thing is that you want to get people interested in your products beyond the ones already searching for them. So if you have a limited budget, again, probably not for you. Or if you have tremendous amounts of search volume across your products, also not really necessary. But if you already exhaust your volume and you want to go above and beyond, that might be a good idea to just get some interested people in. Uh, because if you have this irresistible offer, if you have some good creatives and everything, you might find new super interested buyers in your products now at that time of the year. So consider it. It is the least important in my opinion, but you can absolutely see significant revenue uh, from discovering displays as well. I have some good examples for that too. Check out my other videos. Um, that is really, really useful, especially in Q4. So these are some key points of my Q4 strategy now, right? And of course, there are a thousand details to it. Um, I just wanted to give you like an overall sort of overview on these different campaign types. Let's also talk about some important quick tips. First of all, use in-depth retargeting on Google and uh, Facebook and Instagram, right? Very straightforward. Google isn't the most effective when it comes to retargeting. I prefer Facebook and Instagram because the news feed is a better format for it. Use broad or at least phrase match as CPCs rise significantly. Actually, I just talked about that, but it's very important that you don't just go with exact and not even just phrase in Q4 because you will see massive CPC increases. Capture all brand traffic, you know, as people may look up like your brand plus some discounts, especially. So if you see more volume in Q4 from your PMAX, from your Facebook, from whatever, make sure that you have a brand campaign that captures all the traffic, especially if you don't rank for your own brand for your own brand keywords, which technically almost every brand will. But it makes a lot of sense to be there to capture the traffic and to just have like a five or 10 or $50 per day brand campaign running, capturing all these people. 
Also, customize your PMAX assets to reflect promotions and discounts. This can do very well for you, as I just briefly described, but you can put those on images. You should use headlines, descriptions that talk about discounts that you have. You can use promotion extensions in your PMAX campaign as well. So that's really, really good stuff, uh, good stuff too. And make sure that your PMAX is ready to convert these Q4 visitors. And then also, if you have the capacity, you might even try a short Q4 YouTube ad. Um, well, it's maybe a bit late now because it's like end of October already 2022. Uh, but if you have like a design team or if you have someone who can do that or maybe yourself, right? Making a short YouTube video, 30 seconds, 50 seconds, minute, 20 or something to just highlight one of your key bestsellers or one of your irresistible offers or bundles can be a very interesting strategy because in Q4, people are more open to like, um, you know, ads in general and e-commerce sales and things like that. So if you have something cool that you can push out there, then it is a pretty good idea to do so in Q4 and fuel your funnel through YouTube in Q4 specifically. That's something that makes a lot of sense if you basically exhausted some of your other um, campaign types that we already discussed. Now, if you are looking for Q4 growth above and beyond the things that we just discussed, and again, of course, this is, I hopefully, this is like a solid overview on what to do and what to focus on. But of course, there are a million details to it. So if you want to learn more about how to turn your store into a sales machine in Q4, make sure to check the links in the description, the two links. First of all, my Google Ads training for e-commerce, where I show you like all my strategies for shopping, PMAX, search, display, you name it, in order to get ahead of your competition. Or get in touch with me personally on the other link if I should basically, you know, run ads for you, scale your ads, get them more profitable, increase your ROAS. We work extremely ROAS focused, so we're not just increasing your vanity metrics or your brand campaign sales or something. We focus on cold traffic and actual returns. So if that's interesting for you, if you have an established brand, 30K plus a month or so in revenue, then feel free to check that link out as well. Now, with that being said, I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you are doing something specific now in Q4, what your plans are. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more e-com and Google Ads content. And with that being said, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you will crush it this Q4 and I look forward to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.